Hi, Dr. Ken here with you. Lesson 9, we're looking at chapter 20.5, three-phase star-connected loads. And in this lesson, which is lesson 9, part 2, we're just going to stick with star-connected, but we're going to add the complexity of some shifting between voltages and currents. So, three-phase loads. A three-phase load can be balanced or unbalanced, resistive or reactive. So there's a combination of two things there, both balanced or unbalanced, reactive or resistive. So there's possibility to have a combination of things happening at four levels. I know that might be a little bit to get your head around, but it'll come clearer as we go on. In a balanced load, each phase has the same impedance and power factor. So there might be a difference between voltage and current, but in a balanced load, everything has the same current or the same magnitude of the current. An unbalanced load has different impedances and power factors in each phase. So an unbalanced load can have a different magnitudes and maybe different angles. Loads can be connected in star or delta, and certainly for this particular lesson, we're going to be sticking with star. In a star-connected supply, loads can be single phase as well as three phase. And uh, that's the helpful part of star connection, giving us two voltages that we can play with. A star-connected supply provides three lines, A phase, B phase, C phase and a neutral point, or what sometimes we call the star point. In the presence of a neutral, a single phase load is connected between it and the line. So when we have a neutral, we can have single phase and we call that any phase to the neutral, or the star point is single phase load. So let's look at a balanced load to start with. And you can see here on the left hand side we have a generator, three phase connected in star. On the right hand side we have a three star resistive load. So these are three resistors connected in star. And you can see the waveform to the right. So A phase is the reference. And you can see that B phase is 90 degrees, 120 degrees behind I should say. And C phase is 240 degrees behind or 120 degrees behind B. So in a balanced three phase load, the sum of the currents at the star point are zero. So you'll notice here there's no connection between the two star points because in a balanced three phase load, the sum of the current here at the star point is zero. So let's do a quick little example that demonstrates this. We, let's say we had an industrial three-phase heater and each element has 10 ohms impedance supplied with a line voltage of 400 volts and is star connected. So the voltage across each heater element we're after, then the current in each heater element, and finally, what is the line current? So we've got 400 volts. as our supply and each of our impedances we're told is 10 ohms. If you remember from a, our previous lesson, the voltage across any phase in a star system, the phase voltage is equal to the line voltage divided by root three. So 400 divided by root three, 400 divided by 1.732, we're gonna end up with 230 volts. So again I'll just do you a quick little diagram because you know as I say it always pays to draw a little diagram to get things straight in our heads. So we have a star connection that looks like this and they told us the line voltages that's the ones connected here as 400 volts. We've now worked out what the volts phase is and we've worked that out at 
230 volts. There we go. So it's 230 volts on each of them because they're all the same. Nice and easy. 230 volts. The next thing is we need to know what the current is. And if you remember, line current, phase current through each of the phases is always the same for a star system. So simple Ohm's law, the current phase is equal to the phase voltage, which we've just worked out at 230 volts, divided by 10 ohms. And they've obviously made a little mistake here. And that should have been 10 ohms, which would make this obviously 23 amps. And because the I phase and the I line are equal to each other, then this one here also should have been 23 amps. So a little error there in the book. So just to go over it again, they told us the voltage line at 400 volts. We knew that you multiply, sorry, you divide that 400 by root 3, going to give us 230. Obviously, we can't just add these together because they're at 120 degrees to each other. But we, once we have worked out the voltage across one phase and we know the resistance, because they told us that this each of these was 10 ohms, we could then use simple Ohm's law to work out what the current was. And the current was 23 amps. And if it's 23 amps in this phase, then it has to be 23 amps in that phase. And it has to be 23 amps at the line. So IP equals I line for a star connected system. But what happens when something is unbalanced? So here we have a generator with a star point. Our load this time has different amounts of resistance in each of the legs. And we end up with different currents in each one. So you can see here, we've got 12 amps in C, we've got six amps in A and eight amps. And you'll note that now we've connected our star points together. So in an unbalanced three phase load, the neutral current is the minus of the phase of sum of the currents. So we have to add the currents together and then take the exact opposite. Now there's a process for this. So we know that our we have 6 amps, 8 amps and 12 amps. We construct a phase diagram. 1 amp equals 10 millimeters is the scale. It's got to be the scale. We construct a parallelogram to find out the sum of IC and IA. Then once having done that, we then parallelogram step three and work out what IC plus IA plus IB are. Then once we've got that, because the neutral current is a minus the phase of sum of the currents, we draw another phase of equal length, but 180 degrees to the phaser of the addition of all the phases, or all the currents, all the phase currents. So in this case, we'll end up with 5.3 amps. So here's the drawing. Let's do a quick work through it for you so you get it embedded in your heads. I'll just turn my pen on. And let's just start at the top of the diagram with IC. So here's IC. And it's in phase with VC, as we would expect it to be. Then we have 
the current for A phase, here's the current for A phase and of course it's in phase with its particular voltage even though it's a different magnitude and then finally the current for B and here's the current for B and again it's in phase with B. The reference here Here's our reference and our voltages, 120 degrees, 120 degrees. So we now simply do a phase reduction. And on this particular diagram, we've added C and A currents together. That's been the first step. Simply parallelogram, there's IC, and we parallelogrammed it over here. Could have tipped or tailed it. Then we take IA, parallelogram it, where the two lines intersect is the where the phaser begins, then we go back to the origin, and that length is simply the addition of A and C currents. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to add that result to the B phase that's been left out here. So again, we just take this length and we parallel it, parallelogram. We take the orange one and we parallelogram. We end up at this point here. We project back to the origin and that length is our current. So there is our five point to eight scaled off our drawing just scaled off but remember that that is the minus so to get minus we needed to go 180 degrees the other way so now we have to reverse that direction back out to here and here is the true current at five point to 8 amps and I reckon that angle I'm only estimating it in here looks like about 40 degrees to me just roughly 40 degrees minus or lag there's the full answer so in here is our 40 degrees. So there you have, there's the answer, there's the full answer, 5.28 at minus 40 degrees. Simply by adding the three currents together, even though they were different magnitudes, gave us a final current out here, but we had to rotate it through 180 degrees. There's the 180 that we rotated it through. Doesn't matter which direction you go, 180 giving us an answer out here in this direction. And there's the correct direction and magnitude of the current that is flowing in this neutral connection because we have an out of balance load. So let's up the complexity a little bit for you now and we're now going to do the neutral current but in an unbalanced reactive load. In other words, a load where the currents are of different magnitudes and at different angles. So I'll work through it slowly here. Then we'll look at the process and then we might go through it even again. First thing to note is A phase is our reference. There's A phase voltage. There's our reference. Let's note where the other voltages are. There's voltage C. There's voltage B, and they are all at 
120 degrees because that's the way they're wound onto the generator and they're never going to change. Then the next thing they tell us is that the current in A phase is in phase. So if you go here, here's our current. It's at an angle, phase angle of or a power factor of one, so it's in phase, six amps in phase. And you can see that here's our current phaser, closed arrowhead in phase with voltage A. Let's look at B. They tell us it's a 0.985 lag, so it's eight amps. So here it is, it's at eight amps. 0.95 degrees is 10, sorry, 0.985 power factor is 10 degrees. And remember, our phaser diagram is rotating anti-clockwise. So that current is lagging its respective voltage by 10 degrees. The next one is 0.94. 12 amps at 0.94, but they've made a little error here. This should be lead. Another little error in the book, that should be lead. Because 0.94 is 20 degrees, there's our 20 degrees. Here's our size of our phaser, and the, this particular case, the phaser, the current phaser, is in front of its voltage phaser. So it's at 0.94 or at 20 degrees, and it's in front. Because again, here's our direction of rotation. So they've got that little bit there wrong, for the diagram anyway. So we've got that far. What we're going to do now is... Let's add the currents up where they are. Our 6 amps, our 12 amps, and our 8 amps. And the first one that we do is we add the A and the C, because they're just beside each other. So again, we parallelogram, parallelogram, A, there's the A phaser. Right, that's the A current, that's IA. And over here we parallel in the gram. That's IC. See it's the same colour, IC. We end up at this point here. We project back to the origin. And that is the result of C plus A. The two currents added together. Then next thing we do is we add that to the last one, to B, the one that's left over. And again, parallelogram, picking up that addition and putting it over here. And again, you can parallelogram or you can top to tail, don't really care. You'll end up in the same place. Pick up IB, parallelogram or top to tail, doesn't matter. Where the two cross over, there's the point project it back and there's the addition of the currents so that tells us it's about 8.5 they're telling us so 8.5 amps for that addition but that's not the end of the story remember we have to go minus on the neutral current so we've got to turn that round by 180 degrees, so we've got to put our 180 in here. And here's our final current out in this direction. So it's uh, 8.5 amps. And again, the angle is important. And that looks like about, as a guess, about 15 degrees to me, about 15 degrees and it's minus 15 degrees because it's lagging the reference by 15 degrees.
So the procedure I've just been through is this one. Again, just explained in words. We determined step one. We uh, drew a phaser diagram to scale. We simply added I and C together, step three. Then step four, we added I, A and B together. That gave us the addition of 8.5 amps. I should say the phaser addition giving us 8.5 amps. And of course, we discovered that that was about 15 degrees behind. So again, this is the same diagram. And uh, I'll just quickly go through it again, just in a, in a summary sense. So we simply added up these two, giving us this result. Then we took that result and we added it to B. So effectively, that result there gets added here. The B component got added here. So that was the B component phaser. This is the I and C component phaser. The result gave us this point here. We projected back to the origin. That length represents the magnitude. But as we know, it's the exact opposite is the true current. So we have to rotate through our 180. And we ended up with a neutral current over here, which in this case was about uh, eight and a half amps at what I guessed at about 15 degrees. So the importance of the neutral connection. So if the neutral conductor is broken, an unbalanced load will cause the load star voltage to change, which can cause instability and other problems. So what we're looking at here is two phaser diagrams. So here the star point is zero volts. So there's no current flowing in the star point. So we've got, just change my pen. So if all the voltages are equal, we end up with star point at zero volts which is nice, but if for some reason we get a break in the neutral and the neutral moves to some other place, and this is just an arbitrary place, all of a sudden, what can you see here? The voltage on C phase has gone high. Gone high. The voltage on B phase Here's the B phase voltage. It also has gone high. My G's are not very good G's, are they? So high, but look what's happened to A phase. A phase has gone low. So if you're working on a three-phase installation and you've got two phases higher than normal supply and one lower, then you can say to yourself straight away, probably lost the neutral. There is something gone wrong with the neutral. So if you're on an installation and you're measuring the voltage from any phase to the neutral point, so this is our A phase, our B phase and our C phase and you put your multimeter, you put your voltmeter from a phase to the star point and you get a low reading here and say for C you get a high reading and for B you get a high reading you can say to yourself hmm I've probably lost the neutral the neutral's been broken so if you're working with three phase star systems and you lose the neutral you get these funny voltages around the circuit 
you will find that two voltages go above normal and one goes under. That's the that's kind of the, the hint that uh, two of the voltages will go above and one will go under. So if this was our um, our 230 volt 400 right you'd expect to see 230 volts between a phase and a neutral or the star point but what if you saw 180 here and you saw 290 here and you saw 260 here you would instantly say to yourself hmm they should all be around 230 but because I've got one low and two substantially higher but different to each other you can say to yourself probably lost the neutral the neutral has become disconnected so using the neutral um, typical types of loads that are connected to a star connected three phase supply the neutral provides a single phase supply for loads such as homes and this is the typical connection that uh, you'll actually see in the street so connected to substations um, you'll have something like you know house one house two and house three and you'll notice that house one is connected to A phase, house two to B, and house three to C, but they're all connected to the neutral, of course, to get them their 230 volt supply. That's how they get their 230. Get their 230 volt supply. And they do that all the way down the street. The supply authority just alternates ABC, 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 all the way down the street trying to keep their load as balanced as they can. What you might see in large industries, um, things like an aluminium smelter, often it's because all three phases are well balanced. For an aluminium smelter, they just connect to A, B and C. But for most general industries where they can't tell what the load is going to be, they actually connect A, B, C, and a neutral. Now, an industry or large commercial premises need this neutral. They normally size the neutral to the same size as the largest conductor coming in on any phase. So if you've got a three-phase system, and uh, let's say you've got something like, um, let's say, a 25 millimeter squared main supplying the premises the electricians or the people setting up the installation will also make the neutral 25 millimeter squared if it all stays close to balance the law must be no current but they have to allow for a worst case scenario and AS3000 actually requires you to make your neutral the same size as your supply just in case there is a large imbalance and the neutral will then be large enough to carry that imbalance. So some of the standards that uh, currently apply to accommodate out of balance currents caused in the supply. If you look at clause 3.5.3 of AS3018, it specifies that a single phase circuit the neutral conductor shall have the same current carrying capacity as the associated active conductors, which is what I was just explaining. A three-phase system, the neutral shall have a current carrying capacity not less than the maximum out-of-balance current of the circuit. So basically, as long as you make your active, whatever size your actives are, you make your neutrals the same size, you will be covered. If the neutral line becomes open circuit or high impedance, instability and potentially dangerous voltages can arise. So as you saw in that previous example, 
you might end up with a single phase voltage that ends up well over 300 volts and most appliances are only rated to 230, 240 volts and all of a sudden you're putting 300 volts across them that can be a problem. So AS3000 says don't lose the neutral and we have to go to special lengths to make sure our neutrals stay well bonded. So in general an isolating device shall interrupt all active conductors but shall not interrupt the neutral conductor or the earth conductor. That's the big kicker here. So we never put a switch in a neutral ever, 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 and we never put a switch in a protective earth, never, ever, ever. So that is why, because if you lose your neutral, you will get higher than um, rated voltages. So what are the effects of an open circuit neutral? Effects depend on whether neutral actually goes open circuit, but in general, in a home, the effect depends also on the earthing, as the neutral is connected to earth. As you all know, we bond the earth and the neutral together at the MEN. That's what the MEN link does, multiple earth neutral. That's why it's there. The effects include brownout. In other words, the power can go high or the power can go low. We can have no power and potentially we can have higher voltages which create dangerous situations. In the three-phased unbalanced loads, effects include instability and higher than usual voltages will appear. We can also have a delta connected load to a star generator. So here we have a three-phase star source, it could be a generator, it could be just a transformer on the left. And on the right we have a three-phase balanced load. Sorry, my mouse just played up on me. So here we have what the delta connected load, but a star supply. So a delta connected load has a line voltage across each of the supply loads and must operate successfully as a star connected supply. So here's an example of loads connected to a delta supply. A delta load connected to a delta supply works quite well. So a delta connected supply delta connected load, unbalanced phase currents don't affect. So in this situation, unbalances aren't a problem because the unbalance is taking care of the way everything is connected in parallel. So in a delta to delta system, you don't have to worry about imbalances. It automatically takes care of itself. So to sum up the entire lessons, both part one and part two, A three-phase load can be connected in star or in delta and mesh, but we're going to actually talk more about delta and mesh in the next lessons. A balanced load has the same current and power factor in each phase of a load. An unbalanced load does not. That's the important part to remember. A star-connected source can supply an unbalanced star load provided there is a neutral connection, as long as the two star points are connected electrically. It cannot supply an unbalanced delta load. A delta connected source can supply an unbalanced delta load, but not an unbalanced star load. Load phase currents equals this phase voltage divided by the phase impedance, again just Ohm's law, it's the same as the line current. So load and phase currents equal each other in a star connected load, remember star connected. Loads across each phase of the load is the line voltage divided by 1.73 or square root of 3. Unbalanced in a three-phase load requires the connection between the load and the supply to carry the out-of-balance current. And finally, 
A break in the neutral connection can cause instability and high voltages to appear across the loads. I've also got some YouTubes for you to watch. Um, these are great little videos. The first one, three phase star video runs for eight minutes and three and four wire star connections explained. One that runs for only three minutes. So I hope you've enjoyed um, lesson nine, part two. And that's the end of lesson nine.